Hi guys, I can't wait to show you this painting today. So Sargent Art makes an acrylic pearlescent mixing medium and basically I mix that with white and make my own pearl color. And it's really cheap and it works really good. It's very pretty, so that's a good one to try. Golden fluid acrylic iridescent bronze and the carbon black. Um, and the paint's gray. Those are all the fluids I use. And then golden smalt hue. The Pearl Electric Blue by Arteza, very pretty color. And the Windsor & Newton G Galleria um, Acrylic Thalo Green, the Golden Fluid Teal. And that is the color palette today. So yeah, this uh, Pearl Electric Blue by Arteza, I wanted to show you a close up. It's gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? Really lustery, and I loved the way it looked. So there's the colors I used for this particular painting. Now let's talk about depth for a second. I just want to give you a heads up. So one of the ways that I create depth in my work, and I was taught to do this by another artist who I highly respect, um, was to create, make sure that all my paintings have a high, a medium, and a low, and of the same tone. So the second color there is Payne's Gray, and that's the tone that I'm basing it off of. And then the first one is Smalt Hue, so that's the lighter tone. It's basically like a Payne's Gray, only with a little bit you know, more of a, a transparency and a lightness in it. And then the last one is carbon black mixed with Payne's gray. So it's not gray and it's not black, but it's, um, you know, a darker version of the Payne's gray basically. So it's the golden fluid mixed with carbon black, just a few drops of that black. So what this does when you layer these colors together, meaning going from light to dark next to each other, it provides a gradation, basically. Think of it like shading, you know, when you're shading a colored pencil or paint, you use a light for the highlights, and then there's a medium tone, and then there's a dark for the, the um, shadows. That's how you get the shading and depth in my and that's how I get the depth in my paintings is by um, doing a lot of those kinds of gradations and those are also known as transition colors too you're transitioning I'm basically transitioning from a light to dark and doing that is what gives a lot of depth to my work so you can see I'm just layering my cups straight in it is a dirty pour but my paints are pretty thick so um, they're not dropping down to the bottom very readily but look how pretty the cup looks <laughs> it's like oh it's so pretty this is an 18 by 18 canvas today you guys and it's gallery wrapped one of those edge canvases I love those and I just decided to do basically a straight pour here. It's kind of a cool little um, pour I'm going to do. There's another angle there. So basically it's a straight pour with a flip and drag over the top of the straight pour. I'm just experimenting with some di different things. I've never done that before but you can kind of get a little um, understanding for the consistency of my paints when you see it from a different angle, I think. And there's a little gloop, gloopy drop of something in there, probably paint that didn't get mixed well. So I had to go, I had to take that out at some point later. Now, this is the iridescent bronze. Golden has the most beautiful iridescent colors, and I like a lot of metallics, but golden metallics are above and beyond, in my opinion, any other metallics out there. They are amazing. 
Here comes my flip and drag of the dirty pour, you guys. So, just made another little flip cup of some of the colors that I wanted to see. Some of the brighter colors that didn't come through, like the teal and the white. And then I'm just doing a quick little drag through that dirty pour, and that provides a lot of different textures. And you can see, um, this is the Thalo Green by Winsor & Newton, and I'm just spreading that around the canvas. And then I just wreck it a little bit. So I'm just dragging my fingers, providing some little, some interest really, some just different lines going in different directions. This painting has a lot of um, movement in it, and you'll see when it's finished. But part of that movement did have to do with the, um, you'll see, with that little wreck that I did through there. So don't be afraid to put your fingers in your painting, you guys. It's all a part of the process is, and I, like I said in my last video, I've been having um, some, you know, stale painting days. And I think one thing tonight I realized is I've been scared to waste paint um, lately. I have had some little financial um, things come up in my life and I think it was holding me back from feeling like I was going to ruin a painting and waste something so I had to get over that tonight and when I did and just let go of it no matter what I was really happy with the outcome so that's a high flow silver you guys I don't use that silver of the high flow very often but it really is pretty I have no idea where I'm going with this because I don't love those weird lines. <laughs> but I I have to believe, again, I'm just letting myself believe that in the end it will all work out because it tends to have that effect. If I just let the paint tell me what to do, it's almost like I, I just keep correcting the painting until there's no more corrections to be done. And that's kind of how I feel sometimes when I'm painting, so. Now, the silver didn't quite have the drama or effect that I had hoped for, so I'm gonna do a little swipe. And I love the blue that's coming out, and the green that I had put on the canvas underneath there starts coming out in these swipes and very pretty and they that pearl and this satin enamel um, actually I'm sorry there wasn't satin enamel I just used the the pearl white this time um, it makes the prettiest little cells Everything's just mixed with Floetrol. There's nothing. Just Floetrol and water is the only thing I use this time. Now, I have the highlights. A lot of white just keeps coming up and coming up and coming up. That pearlescent meeting is really heavy, so a lot of things, you know, fall down. So I was trying to add some depth by adding that dark part down there. And then I decide I want to do the plastic reverse isolated plastic wrap dip. I've done a couple of paintings like this, you guys, if you haven't seen them already. Um, it's kind of a risk because you could totally ruin it. But at this point, I'm not in love with it. So I decide to go with it and see what happens. You can just see, I gather it all up in the center, and then I twist, and then I'm very careful the way that I remove it because it's going to drag the paint, 
and I knew immediately I was gonna like that because I did another one like that with the same kind of movement and now it looks like a wave crashing and I'm loving I'm loving that look and I also know that it'll continue to sell because of the metallics that are in there um, but again, I want to add some negative space to this. I think it's too busy, and that's kind of where I was at with it. It was very pretty, but it really needed some negative space in there. So I that's the Payne's Gray and the Payne's Gray Black color. And... I'm just running my popsicle stick over there to kind of get rid of some of the lines and I loved the way this looked in the end it, it was I tried to make it not very dramatic looking um, I wanted it to look really subtle almost so this is the bottom right corner of the painting I wanted to match that and then Again, very subtle. I don't want big, long airbrush lines. So I'm really, really controlling the airflow on this thing. I have one of those airbrushes that if you press very gently, just a very little tiny bit of air will come out. And I love the translucency and the way that looks over there, over the top of that uh, Payne's gray and I know that's gonna dry really pretty I had a lot of control tonight over that paint look at how amazing so now all the cells are popping up and the teal is coming out and look at the phthalo green in there just wanted to give you like <laughs> Isn't that neat? And you know that bronze is gonna just shine super pretty. So now it just looks like a wave. So I took it under the lights in my kitchen because you can see a little clearer some of the shimmering uh, colors. I think that bronze is gorgeous and it's gonna be really, really shiny when it dries. Look at all the colors. You can see the green. Kind of made like a beautiful turquoise color in there. Even though I didn't have turquoise, I had turquoise, I had a phthalo green and blue. And I love that, you know, that looks like sea foam. You know how in the ocean there's that sea foam that pops up, it looks like that. And then the motion of that beautiful wave the high flow see it right there look how sparkly that silver that's all the high flow just melded into some of the white pearl paint and look at that it looks like the waves rushing over uh, rocks kind of like a stormy sea where the wave crashes over the top of something or I love that part it's so pretty I I'm super happy with this painting you guys and um, it is for sale if you're interested you can contact me it reminds me of this painting now this is the great wave of Kanagawa but he's a Japanese artist and um, between 1829 and 1830 something. Doesn't it kind of remind you of that? That was uh, what came across to me when I saw that wave. And it's just a really pretty painting. Anyway, thanks for watching you guys and liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. And if you want to support this channel, you know how to do it. There's a link in my PayPal. Uh, in the description box and you can leave me a tip and I would love to keep making these art videos just for you. Thanks a lot guys. Bye bye.